I've decided to add this strip sander made by Kalamazoo Industries uh, of Michigan to my wood shop. However, it's a bench top or a bench mountable tool and I have zero remaining bench space for it. And I don't really have any good floor space available either for a normal freestanding structure to put it on. So I decided to come up with something a little more creative. And I was thinking about those mailboxes that are on country roads and pivot out of the way in case a snowplow hits them in the winter. And I decided to explore something similar for this. Okay, a little more investigation on my structural pole here. Um, I'm going to have to put another outlet up here because I don't have any more power equipment outlets in the ceiling close enough. And uh, I'm going to make a bearing plate that sits down on top of here. It's going to be a couple layers of plywood glued together. They're going to have a, a slot routed out for this so it'll lock in position on there. And then that'll be what the rotating piece sits on and that'll go up about this high just below or just even more or less with the the hole here and um, then there will be a similar piece down here and the upper one and the lower one will be joined with a 2x4 that's inset into it I've got a uh, sketch of the bearing plate here and how it's going to be going together and what size it is and then there's a sketch here of the upper and lower swivel plates they're going to be held together with some large bolts or screws at the at the seam and then one side's not going to be around it's going to come out to a flat with a notch in it and the 2x4 is going to go in there with wood glue and some pin nails and that will make a a vertical 2x4 that runs here and that whole thing will swivel around on the upper and lower uh, swivel plates and then This is not to scale, but the 2x4 here is cross-section. There's going to be a table of appropriate size to hold the sander. It's going to have a notch in it, which is going to go around the 2x4 at in a location probably about this high, so in between the upper one and the lower one. And um, there's going to be the wooden table on there couple of holes for mounting the sander, a couple of reinforcing plates to give it more surface area where it joins the 2x4, and then I'm going to come up with some sort of an angle bracket to give it more support in this direction. I'm not sure if I can find some nice steel ones at the hardware store or if I'm going to make them out of wood, but uh, that will give it enough support. The thing isn't super heavy. Um, and then finally to lock it in place, I'm kind of divided at this point. This is my original sketch here. Here's the swivel plate, the lower swivel plate, and then the bearing plate. And I thought about just putting a, a, like a clevis pin or even a little piece of dowel rod or a bolt or something through holes drilled in there. And since the bearing plate is going to index on these and can't turn, then if I put a pin through the swivel plate into the bearing plate that'll lock it in position and I'd have to make two positions so it can be here or swivel out of the way or I might do something a little fancier where's my sketch yeah this would be the um, the upper swivel plate it would have a, a wooden bracket and then there would be a one inch dowel rod sitting in it that goes inside the bracket with one side flattened a little bit and probably put a drawer pull or something on the end just to grab it with and slide that in and out and it'll go in to this hole or if it's around the back the mating hole on the back side and if it fits pretty nice that should pretty much eliminate any tendency to, to move around while I'm using it uh, if that doesn't work out well then I can always go back to the other plan and just use one or two of these uh, pins through the two plates It'll be put together with screws so I can take it off if I don't like it or keep both systems or whatever. Um, so this is a fairly minimal shopping list. 
got to get various screws, clevis pins, more glue I'm running out, uh, various screws and bolts, parts for the extra outlet panel or outlet box, a few more things, not a big dollar item. And I've got to run down to Owl Hardwoods tomorrow morning and pick up a sheet of um, three-quarter inch Baltic birch plywood, which is what I want to use for this. Um, I'm not too fond of the quality of three-quarter inch plywood they have at the local home centers. It's mostly like you'd use for flooring or something, and it's or uh, structural flooring, not cosmetic flooring, and it's pretty rough. Um, and uh, it also tends to have crap filler in it. So if I'm trying to put bolts and things through, a lot of that'll be trying to anchor in the crappy part of it. Um, so I want something with a higher quality, and I think that Baltic birch stuff is going to be a good compromise. We'll hit it in the morning. The first order of business was to get another outlet here, which I've done, and it lets me route the wires from those things that are kind of far flung to that outlet, which is where they always were, and then get the things that are more over to the right here into another outlet, but not too close to the post because then they'll be hanging right down where I want to swing the uh, the sander, and actually they will kind of, but I'm going to be tying them up to the conduit and then having them hang down. I've restocked my supply of Baltic birch. I don't use a lot of it, but when I do need it, I need it. So I usually buy like a half inch sheet and a three quarter inch sheet, four by eight, and uh, then that lasts me a few years for most of the projects where I need it. And uh, I have a different supplier this time around. I got it from Owl Hardwood Lumber in uh, Des Plaines, Illinois. The sheet was about $125 for the 4 by 8 sheet, or the uh, 3 quarter inch sheet. And I don't remember what it was. It was closer to 100 for the half inch sheet. And uh, I'm only using the 3 quarter inch on this project and not even nearly uh, this 4x4 four four piece. And what's so great about Baltic birch, by the way? Well, compared to most plywood that's just a few plies thick, the uh, Baltic birch stuff has got lots of high quality laminations instead of just a few. And they're not full of knots and things like that. It's all good quality on each layer. Um, and they tend to be, you know, for serious uh, carpentry, cabinetry, various other things where you need a, a very high quality plywood instead of like a construction grade plywood that most of the big box stores carry. If they carried stuff like this, nobody would buy it because they would blanch at the cost. Um, anyway, that's what that's all about. I've got my major pieces of Baltic birch cut out, four pieces for the swivel plates, two swivel plates, two layers of plywood each. Uh, this piece here is just big enough to put on the two circles for the bearing plates, both layers, and this is the table that the sander will rest on. I've got one of my pieces all marked up with the pattern for the swivel plates. And I'm going to cut this one first and then transfer some of the dimensions to the other ones. The more critical ones I'll actually measure. And now i got to cut out the inner hole with my scroll saw. And then a little sanding with the spindle sander. Okay, those are the swivel plates, both layers. And they're slightly different. These are the lower ones. They go on a bigger pipe, so they've got a somewhat um, different size hole. But I've just trimmed them so they fit the 2x4. Good tight fit. Now I have to make the bearing plates. Okay, this remaining piece of board is marked and now we got to cut it out. And those are done. Okay, I'm going to glue up the swivel plates next. 
Okay, there's that. Now I have to do the other one. Okay, <clears throat> so both swivel plates are glued up. Looks like I've got to do a little bit more. Wiping away of some of the oozing seeping glue there. Make just a little bit easier job of sanding it later. I have the two halves of the bearing plate and the bottom one needs to get cut out like this in order to fit over this piece on the pole. And to that end I've got this router bit which is designed to take out half of that running along a bearing and uh, it's probably not too apparent in the camera but that's exactly what it'll do. I'm glad it's a standard size. First I have to cut it in half with the bandsaw. Okay, I'm going to make a trial cut on this board which I've marked with the half inch line and make sure I've got my depth set correctly. I don't need to worry about the fence because it has the bearing on the top of it which will define the distance or the depth. Looks like it's just about perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and cut the actual pieces now. Well, I've decided that it's too hard to hold this safely with that big bit and it wants to catch on the edge because there's such a small amount to deal with there. It's hard to stabilize it and I'm worried that it's going to either take the piece and fling it across the room or pull my hands into it. So I'm making a new piece here on a bigger board which I'm going to cut in half but I'm not going to cut to the profile and that should make it work a lot better. Well that worked out a lot easier. It was much easier to control going across like this and I had the fence set back just a hair uh, behind the bearing so it was really riding on the bearing but there's a like a 32nd of an inch or something there to keep it from twisting and getting out of hand and uh, I got a much better cut out of that. Let's see if I can get the other piece. There we go. Now I should test fit it to make sure it goes over those little nubbins. Well, it looks like it does. It's sitting right down on the flange there, and the two pieces are coming together, more or less. It's just hard to hold them that way. Okay, so that fits around there. Sits down on there pretty nice. Okay, I'm ready to glue this guy up now. But because of the um, difficulty in lining the three pieces up, I don't think I want to try clamping this. I may put in some brad nails for this. Let me see. I think two per side will do it. I don't want to get over to here and here because I'm going to be putting uh, bolts through to hold the two halves together once I saw them and I don't want them to be hitting the, uh, the brad nails. Well, until the glue dries, the only other thing I can do on this is to make my second alternate. <laughs> um, where's my drawing? Here. Um, my mechanism for locking the swivel plate onto the um, one of the holes in the post and I'd figure I was going to take a piece of one inch hardwood dowel and uh, 
shape one end of it to look like a knob, I decided not to buy a commercial drawer pull. All I really need is something to get a grip on. I can just turn that on the lathe and uh, I don't have any one inch dowels so I'm going to have to take something a bit larger and uh, turn it down on the lathe so that's the next step. Okay I have to find the center of this dowel rod so I can center it up on the lathe properly and this is the system I've been favoring lately when I have to find the center of something like a dowel or it works even on larger things but um, I have a speed square and the end of one of these it can be anything that's square I just happen to have this piece uh, handy that I could clamp onto my table in this case I'm using the extension table of the table saw but it would be any bench or anything I just use a couple of beam clamps and the idea is that you rest the dowel on the flange of the speed square and up against here and then mark it diagonally and then make one or two additional lines after rotation and you end up with with that which defines the center I'm going to do the same on the other side and once again the center is found I, I've seen so many crazy ideas on places like YouTube for finding the centers and some of them are almost like Rube Goldberg arrangements where it, you have to set all sorts of things up to do it and um, I know there's commercial devices there actually are some little plastic gizmos you can get that essentially form this shape and you can just hold it in your hand and and mark your centers but uh, without going out and buying that special this could be another uh, speed square if you've got two just clamp it up next to it does have to be touching here that's critical uh, and uh, it's a piece of cake and works really well Okay, I've got this roughed out on the lathe, now I just need to do a little uh, touch up on the sander. I've made this diameter just slightly oversized. Um, <clears throat> you know, it won't quite fit in there. So I can take it off just a little bit for a perfectly tight fit. And now before I cut this in half I have to put in my uh, holes for my uh, bolts that are holding this together this will be held together by two of these so I have to drill a uh, starting hole just to make sure everything's lined up and then cut it in half and then drill out with larger drills for both the insert here and the clearance for this and then countersink the end to make sure I'm drilling the holes more or less properly here um, I'm using this bubble level to uh, determine what's vertical now that all assumes my table and everything is vertical too but it should be uh, close enough for what I need to do here okay there's those holes now I'm gonna cut this in half Need to do a little uh, touch up sanding here. Okay, there's the test fit. Looks just about perfect. This isn't going anywhere, just a very slight movement. And I can probably shim that if I have to, but it doesn't matter. And now to countersink for these heads, 
I'm just using a drill bit of the same diameter. And now I've got a 5 16 drill bit with a piece of tape to indicate depth and I just need to open up these holes to that size. That's the recommended pilot hole for these brass inserts. I'm going to wait a couple more hours for the glue to fully set before I try putting those inserts in there because they're almost right on the glue line. I don't want these parts popping apart from the uh, forces of that. So I'm going to go get lunch or something. Okay, it's time to put the brass threaded inserts into these holes in the um, the bearing plate. <clears throat> and um, with softer woods I can put these in there using the slot on the end with a big screwdriver to put them in, but on this wood it's much too dense and the, uh, the ends of the brass just tear off where you're trying to drive them in. So I'm using this other method instead where I put a suitable size bolt or screw for the uh, inner thread size and then a jam nut on there and use that to drive it in after which I loosen the jam nut and then just thread the the bolt out of the insert. Um, you also really should use epoxy on these uh, lining the walls with epoxy or smearing it around on here uh, to help anchor it in there and fill any remaining gaps um, and also a good drive I use these Allen wrenches. I could use a uh, insert into a drill. Um, it's also very important to get them started straight or they'll be permanently off. They thread in really tight and you want to get them straight as straight as possible when you first start them out. So there is those in there. I have to wait for the epoxy to dry a little bit and do some finish sanding on that. I've marked the holes for the bolts that will hold the two halves of the swivel plates together and I'm going to drill down with a pilot hole that's long enough to get past the dividing line at least a little bit to leave its mark so I know where to continue once I've cut them in half. Unlike the bearing plate this has a flat bottom on it that will make it easier to drill in the drill press. And now to cut them in half on the bandsaw. And there is a test fit of the upper swivel block. It has just a little bit of play in there. And the uh, bottom swivel block has more slop than I expected. I probably over sanded it or messed up a little bit. I may have to shim that slightly uh, with some padding material to uh, close up the gap a little bit, we'll see. Okay, all the holes are drilled. I've got clearance holes here for the 3 uh, what are those? 3 16 16 uh, cap head, or um, what are these called? The term escapes me. Um, I want to call them cap head screws, but I'm not sure that's right. <clears throat> and then the uh, the bottom parts are tapped a little, or drilled a little bigger to receive these thread-in fittings, and hopefully those will go in without much trouble. Once again, I've made my driver with a jam nut. So there are the inserts put in with epoxy. On these bigger ones, I actually found I had to use two jam nuts to get it to really lock down properly. So now, how are these guys doing? That epoxy is pretty much cured. I think I can sand it now. Okay, so I've got my bearing plate here with my countersunk screws, and they should go into these tapped fittings, and we'll see if they thread in there properly. Ta-da! back in one piece. That worked out pretty well. One of those actually went in slightly off, um, a little bit skewed from straight, but it's still threaded in there okay. Just took a little more torque. Now 
because of some slight offsets like that just caused by the taps and the or the inserts being a little off I have to do a little light sanding on this to level out the top of the bearing plate okay those are dried and sanded now I just have to see about putting it together yeah, those came out pretty well the only thing I really had to do was the uh, alignment was a little too tight I didn't give much clearance for this part of it so I had to open those up a couple of drill sizes and then everything went together real nice I just gave it a, a touch up sanding um, to make sure everything is nice and flat and um, we should be ready to go to the next step in putting this together now I'm going to try to use some felt to make up the extra space between these blocks and the pole and I uh, just got some cheap felt here it's fairly thick stuff so maybe a couple layers of that will do the trick do a little experiment here yeah so a quick test here it looks like two layers just about perfectly makes up the slop and likewise for the larger pole it looks like it's just about perfect okay here's the first one I've got the felt pieces cut they're slightly shorter for the the inner wrap and as usual when I attach felt to most things unless it's already adhesive back I tend to use a rubber cement for this there's the first layer put on and now the padding is all glued in place but I have to wait for it to set before I can actually do something with it and do some trimming like this one needs a bit and this one needs a bit more uh, the felt actually isn't very dimensionally stable and when you get it wet with glue for example it can compress or stretch quite a lot so have to apply it with care but it, this is the one that I got that was the closest to the right dimensions even after manipulation some of these other ones weren't quite so good but that's really enough for one day I think as a bit of an aside I've got this uh, DeWalt what are these things called it's like a 788 or something they don't exactly put the number on here in a clear spot there it is 788 DW 788 and um, these things have a chronic problem is that the air hose uh, sections which are uh, this kind of a plastic here they break after a while and DeWalt wants nearly thirty dollars for a new hose like this and um, I don't know who makes these things for them but there's a company called Lock Line made in USA they have these things now they they put their name on every one of these segments but they're basically the same thing so a little less glare anyway these things are I think they're like seven dollars or something on Amazon quarter inch adjustable coolant hose quarter inch inner diameter 13 inch overall length and you get two bases with different size threads quarter inch and eighth inch NPT fittings there's already a metal one on the saw so I'm not about to change that and there are three different nozzles of uh, 16th inch, 8th inch, and quarter inch. Uh, whereas the saw just has this one, I think that's probably going to be, I don't know which one that is. Probably the middle one. Anyway, and on top of that, these buggers are really hard to push together by hand, and uh, Lockline makes this product quarter inch hose assembly pliers and that's about ten dollars so for something on the order of eighteen dollars or whatever it was 
you can get the equivalent of what DeWalt sells for about 30 bucks plus the installation tool um, you know it's a, a much better deal and it's probably better quality well the uh, DeWalt version has a hole that's somewhere in between the two smaller sizes that come with this kit uh, which would be the 16th inch and the 8th inch but definitely not this quarter inch one so I think this is the one to have the pliers actually has helpful stuff on it like socket end up and ball end up so you can visualize how to orient it although the fact that this side has that tapered part it's pretty clear that you need to put in oops, drop everything on the floor you know it has to go in like this to get the tool on this part it's easier to take the table off which just involves undoing one uh, adjustment knob and then it just comes off and then it goes on like this but I'm not going to be able to show it I don't have my tripod handy so I'm going to have to do this with the camera not rolling it did put it on there so that's on and there we go Okay, it's all put back together. This hose is nice and stiff and stays where you put it. I think it's probably a better quality than the one provided by DeWalt originally. It's the name brand and uh, not what I imagine to be like a Chinese knockoff or something. So uh, I want to test it out real quickly. Yep, it's doing a good job. It's blowing all the dust away. Success! As Dave Jones would say, winner, winner, chicken dinner. Alright, here's a fit of the lower swivel plate. And it's uh, firm, but it's adjustable by hand. I pushed it down to a lower height. Now for the upper one. Okay, here's the upper swivel plate, and once I got it done, I realized it fit better with only one layer of felt in there. So that turns around here now. Again, it requires a little effort to turn it, but it's it's not going anywhere. So, and it's sitting on top of the bearing plate. So, that's how that looks at this point. Okay, I've got the sander up on my regular height workbench trying to decide on how high I want it to be on the post. I think I'd like it a little higher so that the area I'm working on is more directly in front of me instead of down here. This is probably a good height, so now I just gotta get out the tape measure and see how high I want this to actually be. I'm gonna use my bevel saw to cut this uh, 2x4 down into the correct length. Okay, there's that assembly. It's fitting in there pretty well. Have to make a couple of small adjustments to height, but that's good. Now it needs to be glued and screwed, basically, at both of these locations. But first, I need to take off the corners along here so that I can put these guys on here at a bit of an outward angle. There should be one here and one here. And uh, Yeah, so I need to make those cuts before I start attaching this 2x4 permanently to the swivel plates. 
and I've cut my table out with a notch to go here it actually needs to sit about here I made it a little loose but that's okay because that's not structural so that's how that's gonna go on there I can't get far enough away to get a, a better picture unfortunately a couple of Amazon boxes piled up I've got my table here so I can visualize what I'm trying to do figure out what angle I want I'd like it to be inboard of here so I'm not cutting into this probably about like this I'm trying to decide if it would be easier to uh, actually cut the 2 by 4 at an angle and inset them or just to put another thing out here that already has this shape and then just glue it on that might be better really the screws are still going to go all the way through maybe I'll do that that's a little better with a couple of shims under there I can verify my angles a little better now and this says it's about 33.6 degrees and I wonder if that agrees with I got on this side yep pretty close it does pretty much match the rough lines I drew so I think that's the angle I'm going to go for maybe I'll round it up to 34 it won't make a big difference Now for a little bit of planing. So for the cuts on this board now that I planed it down to the requisite half inch thickness, and I think it is half an inch if I double check it, um, <clears throat> I've got the fence on the right side of my bandsaw blade and then just a sacrificial piece of wood right up next to the blade and I've got it adjusted to 57 degrees which is the complement of 33 degrees which is what I'm after so all I should have to do is run it across here and it'll make the cut and there we go so that'll work out pretty well The angles are correct. Things are a little cattywampus because it's all balanced on boxes here. But uh, once it isn't relying on that, I think everything will work out just about perfectly on this. I gotta have to glue this up onto here now. That's the next step. Okay, I'm laminating the tapered piece to this. Now the 2x4 isn't absolutely flat, so there's gonna be some gaps, but that's okay. Like there's a very small gap here I can't really close up and the corners are rounded so this piece even though it's the right dimension appears to stick out a little bit I'll probably do a light sanding on it but just for cosmetic reasons now the reason this plate is up here is when I uh, resawed this piece at one point near one end the blade wandered a little bit or the fence shifted or something and I actually cut a, a fine sliver in there before I realized what was wrong and rather than just tear that off I put it back down put some wood glue on it and used a piece of paper to work the glue in between the, the wafer thin piece of wood so it'll be bonded back up again and so I've got a piece of wax paper over that area and this other board and I'm clamping it so that's what that's all about okay I've temporarily just got this clamped up to the side of my table saw so that I can put my reinforcing blocks on here I want them to be right up against the 2x4 so I need to actually have the 2x4 on the table as I'm gluing this up it'll be just about like that
Yeah. Now for a little glue and uh, pin nails or brad nails. Well, I was able to put the pins in, but they don't go very far into the table, so I followed it up with clamps once I had them positioned with the pins. So now I just got to let that dry. We're getting there. While glue is drying, I'm going to put some beeswax on the bearing plate here just to help it be a little bit more than dry lubricated. <laughs> okay, I've got a couple holes in here for mounting the sander. And really there's nothing much left to do here except get this table mounted on the on the vertical pole here, the 2x4. So I'll get busy with that. Okay, wood screws, actually sheet metal screws, but used as wood screws, are anchored all the way through the three quarter inch table and slightly beyond. I have to grind those off. And then with fairly long screws through my adapter, angle adapter here, and then into the 2x4 by a fair amount, they go most of the way through the 2x4. That worked out just about perfectly. And now I have to put these brackets up here. I've already drilled the holes for them. Okay, so the table is secured, probably in an overkill manner. I want to make sure it's strong and steady though. So I've got these two heavy brackets here and here that <clears throat> are anchored all the way through the table with fairly heavy bolts. I think they're quarter twenties and with deep screws three places into the 2x4 because the 2x4 is softer wood I use three of them instead of two. If I could have gotten long enough screws of the right size I might have just put a bolt all the way through but the hardware store didn't have them. Plus that means then you have trouble lining them up sometimes so I just use the deep screws. And then uh, <clears throat> on the bottom I've got actual shelf brackets as I mentioned earlier and they're on that angled plate that I made earlier. I did have a small oops, I uh, realized that the mounting hole was going to hit the the raised angle piece so I just chopped it out with my chisel to make room for the bolt. But otherwise uh, this is in with deep wood screws as I said before here and shallower ones here and they're ground off. So um, the next thing you do is go over here and build the mechanism to lock this to the pole. This is what I've got here. I just have to build the apparatus on the side of it to keep it from doing this. So that's the next step. Okay, here's what I came up with. I made the side brackets here just a hair shorter than the diameter and then I sanded a slight flat spot on it so once it goes under here it won't turn very much and that also helps keep it oriented with the part where I shaved it down here to fit these holes oriented properly to the holes so um, I put that in here and it just goes right in and friction holds it in it probably won't wiggle out by itself now if I pull this out and now I can Oops, went back in. There we go. Uh-huh. And now it's locked. The only unfortunate thing about this scheme is that these poles aren't absolutely straight perpendicular to the the pathway here they're off by a couple of degrees but hardly enough to bother with it'll probably be barely visible that it's not absolutely perpendicular so that seems to work pretty well and it's just put together with two drywall screws so it can be taken apart easily if I want to change it in some way I'm just holding this with my finger here and it's wanting to drop down 
so I've got to try to wedge it a little tighter. But uh, that's a test fit. Okay, it came together. There's just a little bit of wiggle in the table, but it's pretty solid. I'm sure it can hold plenty of weight. And what I've got here is I've got the uh, pin, which can be pulled out like that. And then, see how far I can get this away. It swivels around the back side. And I can put the locking pin back in, and now it's not going anywhere over there. Now, what I've done here to make it serviceable, originally I was going to glue and screw these joints here. I wasn't sure it was going to be strong enough that way. So what I ended up doing is I made a couple of pins. They pull out kind of hard, but they are in there. Steel pins, it's a 3 eighths inch, 3 eighths inch diameter, I believe. Goes all the way through the 2 by 4 And there's another one just like it down on the bottom. That's what the rings are on here for, so you can pull them and it also helps twist them out. And that holds them in there good and tight. The only concern I have there is because I hadn't really planned to do it that way, and these were just for alignment, these fingers here. Uh, now they're structural, holding weight, and I'm kind of like, eh, about that, you know? <laughs> So what I decided to do was um, two things. Uh, because these pins, I wanted to move them back so they'd be in slightly thicker wood and not so close to the edge. That means they're a little bit close to the back of the 2x4. I think that'll be plenty strong, but just in case, I'm going to do two safety backups. I've got a couple of these angle brackets. They look like brass but they're steel with a, a brass plating on them or a brass colored plating. I'm going to uh, I put a couple of wood screws in here um, and then cut the heads off and ground them slightly rounded and I've got the corners cut off of these like this so they go over those pins and then I'm going to run to the hardware store tomorrow and pick up four more of those brass threaded inserts and the appropriate bolts. Maybe something with a, a knob or a, a butterfly type uh, grip on them so I don't need tools to take it apart. And uh, then I'll put those in here. Actually, these are countersunk in the wrong place and because they're offset diagonally, this one ends up really close to the wood edge of the 2x4. This one's really close here. So I'm going to make new holes that are centered and then put those four in here and just thread them in, hopefully by hand. Um, and then that will make a reinforcement that is really strong. It won't be able to drop and it won't be able to pull out this way because of these pins up here. So that'll both hold the weight and keep it from coming out this way. And uh, I'm going to do one other thing. I'm going to uh, consider putting one more additional bolt through here. I'm really thinking it's going to be totally unnecessary. And then it starts putting a lot of holes 
all in the same area here, so I'm still pondering that. But I wouldn't mind having like one more bolt <laughs> going right through here. Perhaps I'll leave that off, and if I ever get any inkling that this isn't strong enough, I might add it later. But uh, let's see how that sander fits now. Okay, there's the sander on it. And it's not even really in the way that much, but it will be when I'm using the table saw. Because even when I rake the table saw at an angle, a lot of times I have pieces that are coming right through this area and under the motor of the lathe. So it's definitely going to be in the area for cutting longer pieces. But nothing goes on the left side of the post here. So I should be able to pull the pin. And just rotate it back like that. And that's exactly what I wanted it to do. So... I think I may put a little varnish on this. I don't plan to varnish the whole thing, not all these pieces, but I may varnish the table just because that's going to be the main wear area. It'll help clean it up a little bit too if it's got a layer of varnish on it, but I think that's the only thing I'm going to varnish. Oh, well, I ended up varnishing almost everything <laughs> once I got started. There's places where uh, it doesn't look so dark, but that's just where there's some glue on the surface so it doesn't soak in and it makes a lighter color. I suppose that when this dries, it will uh, all be the same color again. And I've got a couple heater fans aiming in the general direction, so it should be in the area of 70 degrees around this overnight, and it should be dry in the morning. Okay, after my visit to the hardware store, I've put a couple new holes for the size hardware I bought, which was 1024, into these brackets. And I've got the necessary screws or bolts, brass inserts, and a uh, cap head hex drive bolt with a couple of jam nuts to put it in, and the requisite Allen wrench. So now I just need to mix up some epoxy. Oh, I also drilled the holes uh, in the 2x4 here. Alright, the brass threaded inserts are in there now. The epoxy is dried. I decided there was no need to have thumb screws or knobbed screws on here. Um, it's with the with the screws into the brass inserts they come in and out so easily that it's not really much of an advantage and also if I just pull this pin here these will just lift up off these pins quite probably with a little bit of wiggling and if they don't then I can undo these screws and make it a little easier so that's my safety backup system for this Okay, project finished. There's the sander mounted on there. Just only the slightest wiggle on the table when it's in operation. And that was actually without the lock in there. Now with the lock in there, it barely moves. So I'll pull the lock out. put the lock in on this side and it's out of trouble and the lock is back in It swings so easily I'm actually inclined to just leave it in working position and then only swing it out of the way when I'm using the table saw with long boards and plywood and so on as opposed to what I was originally going to do storing it in the uh, swung away position and only bringing it out when I need it. I think this will be better. I'm quite happy with the way this turned out. 